Here we are at the airport, getting ready to go. About an hour and a half out. I'm pumped. Head on to Entebbe, Uganda, where we will see Kenny. She'll be there to pick us up. So here we go. So after a quick stop at the food court to grab a bite of last chance American junk food, I headed over to the gate where it head to Amsterdam and then on to Uganda. This journey started in Anniston, sent out by Parker Memorial, all the way to Uganda, Africa, specifically in a district called Mitiana, where I'll meet Kenny. It's just west of Kampala, about an hour and a half on rough roads. Finally, after a 21-hour flight, I land in Uganda. Man, am I ready to stretch my legs. The beauty of Uganda is manifested in its landscape and wildlife. Giraffes, lions, and African elephants are just a few of the beautiful creatures you'll see there. Uganda also has the world's most powerful waterfall, Murchison Falls. It's where the Nile River that's two miles wide at some points bottlenecks into a 30 foot wide gap, shooting through the mountain like a giant pressure washer. It'll disintegrate anything that falls into it. But nothing has made an impression on me like the young doctor, Kenny Lou, who gave up a medical career to go to the bush and serve the Lord. He and his wife, Claire, and their four kids, Sarah, David, Joseph, and little Abigail, who had never seen a white person before and was wondering why her parents had let this big Mazungu in the house. Shortly after my arrival, Kenny wanted me to walk with him through campus on the trails to show me what God's been doing through the prayers and giving of believers, specifically what God's been doing through your giving at Parker Memorial. He's done nothing but talk about how your giving and the grace of God has been such a ministry to them, and they couldn't have done this without Parker Memorial. Say that again. So those kids call me Musao. Uh, almost everyone in the community call me Musao because mm -hmm. the word for doctor in Uganda is Musao. Actually, my, my parishioners are confused whether they should call me Musumba, which is shepherd, or they should call me Musao. <laughs> <laughs> so 2018, uh, we had shared the gospel with many, many people. And uh, many people had come to the faith, but there was no Bible teaching church in the community. Uh, June 2018, Claire gets me in trouble because she goes and tells people who had come to the faith from the community to come to church. Earlier, a month earlier, we had built a semi-building right here uh, where we see car tires all the way to where the kids are. We had built a semi-building there. It was made from papyrus and trees uh, and wood uh, where kids would come to their Bible studies because they were flooding our home. It was overwhelming. So I thought I could build a, a semi-building where they can come and uh, interact and study and eat from there, fellowship sort of. Little did I know that that was going to be the first home of the Sioux Baptist Community Church. So that Saturday, Claire invites people to come. And then she comes home and she's like, you better be ready to prepare your sermon. And I'm like, what sermon? And she's like, people, I've invited people to come to church. I'm like, what church? <laughs> and she's like, the church we've been talking about. I'm like, isn't that like 2019, 2018? And she's like, brace yourself. They're coming. <laughs> so I instantly prepared my sermon. I remember how the sermon was about who is the true disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, 
And so that Sunday morning, I put on my jacket and I show up and I found 50 people already seated and waiting for me to pastor them. <laughs> I was like, Lord, what is it? Because I thought there would be like three people and then I escaped the responsibility. 50 people, young and old. That morning of Sunday, uh, uh, June 2018, the Sui Baptist Community Church was birthed. So we've been here. The Lord has allowed us to even move from a semi-building to a permanent building uh, through uh, Brother Kenny Stinsberg, whom I was sharing with the ministry and the newsletters, and he was sharing with uh, uh, Brother Mark and the, the other people at Park Memorial Baptist Church. So this time they reached a consensus where they wanted to strike a memorandum of understanding or a partnership with us. And uh, in the partnership, they wanted to build us a church building. And when I shared with my people, they were very, very excited because that was far-fetched from what we ever thought we would accomplish. We were comfortable in our <laughs> semi-building because we didn't have the resources. And uh, when I shared the news, my people were very, very excited and we are very thankful. So uh, Park Memorial helped us to build a very strong, very big church building. And uh, the Lord has used it to do various things because sometimes we use it as a medical clinic for the community. Uh, we use it as a, a chapel for the school and many various uh, ministerial uh, 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 activities. So this is the, the, the church, the church building that uh, Park Memorial helped us to build. And uh, also Park Memorial came in handy because we are struggling with uh, supporting children at the school. A community like this, we had put tuition to be $15 per child. But parents and grandparents can barely pay that money. So Park Memorial comes in to help us uh, support uh, that time, I think it was 35 young people. Now there are 40 young people that Park Memorial helps us with. And those young people, uh, the, 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 the support that comes through that helps us to buffer the budget of the school. Because without that, it will be difficult to run this school where you have almost 300 people to take care of and there's no much finances that come in from the very people. And yet you know that if you send those, these children back home, they will not study. Their grandparents will just hand them a digging tool to go to the garden. And their future, and even their eternity could be in danger because at home they don't get to hear the gospel. So what we do, we just allow them to come the way they are, and the Lord provides. Uh, because one of the ways this community is going to be transformed is through the gospel but also equipping young people with the tools that they need to work life. Kenny shows me how he planned to do the church like he did the school, kind of square and, and plain. But as he thought about it, he really wanted something that was going to last generations, not just his ministry, but the ministries to come. He wanted something that not only his kids and the community kids could have, but their kids could have as well. Something that would last for generations.
job, good job. My people die. Lord, as our prayer, we are crying. We don't want to see poverty anymore as the African child of said.